Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. It is July 21st, and we're going to do a part two on our electroculture. Now, I'm out here in the garden, and on part one, we talked about these. Now, these uh, squash here, this is prolific squash. And these squash, and it is 45 days to harvest on prolific squash is what it's supposed to. Now, I say I don't know how much difference this aerial, uh, this atmospheric antenna made, but I know we started harvesting these uh, after seven weeks, which was uh, uh, not seven weeks, five weeks, which were uh, 35 days. So they were 10 days early. And they have been pretty prolific, prolific uh, to the extent that today, right now, it's 99 degrees. You can see how uh, wilted over they are. Now, the drip system had run for six hours uh, this morning. This is six-inch emitter spacing on here. Uh, so it's getting a lot of lot of water. There's, there's five hoses runs down this road. But the heat is zapping it out uh, now what i wanted to do on this update too we're going to talk about uh building a simple uh atmospheric antenna that you could use in the ground or in containers but i wanted to come back over here uh these this row of uh cucumbers and this row over here these were planted on the 17th now, after three days, which would uh, been yesterday, uh, I got to noticing that all of these were up. But after two days, uh, this this row and the bottom of, of this other row were up. So germination uh, time and speed with these. Now I don't. I'm not going to say that it was so fast because these uh, magnetic antennas that we put in the ground that we showed in part one uh, that that was the uh, cause of it but I've never had the seeds germinate that fast usually it's about five days or so uh, but anyway we're going I'm going to do a little water in here and then we're going to get to uh, uh, looking at building a uh, simple atmospheric antenna that, that you can uh, use and, and experiment for yourself. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make an atmospheric antenna uh, with a piece of bamboo and uh, some wire. Now this wire that I have here is uh, this is just a strand from a, a multi uh, wire here as far as multi-stranded uh, piece of wire. I think this is too hot. Uh, you can take and strip the insulation off the wire. You can buy wire that's a certain size. Now, if you're going to just use a freestanding antenna, which are some other designs we'll show, uh, as we go along, uh, you might want to get it uh, at least 12 gauge, at the minimum 14 gauge, but uh, 12 gauge is probably better for most freestanding antennas. Uh, <clears throat> and what we're going to do with this is we're going to bring this all the way down to the bottom, and it's going to make it easiest whenever I drive this into the ground uh, for this wire to be tucked into the bottom here that way it kind of holds it does have a split in this piece of bamboo which might work to my advantage to make this wire stay better uh, we've got a we're going to use a pair of pliers uh, i'm going to slide this into that groove that'll make it stay there now when you wrap this, now some say it doesn't make a difference. Some says it does make a difference. Uh, there's 
uh, with all of these that say that it makes a difference, you'll have to try it yourself because there's no studies that show wrap this wire a certain way. There are uh, different uh, papers and, and pamphlets and stuff on electroculture that's a lot of them back to the late 1700s. Uh, well, there are some that's actually back further than that. Uh, but they're not as specific as that. But what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this count, this clockwise. Let's start from the bottom towards the top. We're going to wrap this clockwise. And you could just run this wire straight up, but it's not. It's going to do better if it's if it is wrapped around this uh, piece of bamboo. And we can use light wire because of the way that we're doing this. Uh, now, these wires, this piece of wire isn't long enough to go all the way to the top. If you're going to make a connection in this wire, what you want to do, and the easiest way to make connection, uh, if you use some vice grips, some needle nose vice grips work good, just overlap the wires each direction and then wrap it around uh, good and tight. What you want to do is you don't just want to twist the ends together. You want to wrap it around good and tight. And uh, I do this the same way where it's uh, clockwise rotation uh, going towards the top. But anyway, now what we've got is this wire is one piece now and we're going to continue to wrap this around and work our way towards the top of this now if you have any sharp edges sticking out or something like maybe this would be and it's going to be right there where you're walking by you might want to uh, clip it off or make sure it's tucked under but other than that I, I wouldn't worry about it too much uh, uh, this one here, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I am going to put it somewhere. But uh, this, this, it doesn't have to be this big a bamboo. It just This was what was handy in my workshop when I was uh, looking for one to demonstrate this. I do have some that's smaller. If you're doing a container, uh, a smaller diameter would probably be better. Uh, another thing is, the longer it is, the... Uh, more effect you're going to get out of it. So uh, this is a little over two meters or a little over two uh, two yards long, probably about seven foot uh, or so. And it should work uh, excellent for for the situation where I'm going to use it. And it should work excellent for those of you that wanted to uh, know a little bit more and to do this uh, type of thing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tuck this end in this crack up here because I don't want it to unwind until I get something to hold it into place. Now, I could just leave it just like just like this, uh, not uh, bother putting anything else on it. But if you put something on the top, uh, we're going to set this aside for a moment. If you put something on the top, even if it's like a piece of wire uh, like this, this is another multi-strand wire here about uh, probably two, it might be four, but... It probably is four gauge. But anyway, it doesn't have to be real long. You're going to need some kind of wire cutter to, to cut this off. And then you're going to have to have, and I don't know how good these are cut. I just pulled these out of the box. I don't normally use them. But uh, what you'd have to do is you're going to have to uh, strip this wire down now. What I'd do first, because I kind of want this end to stay in place, I would take one or two of these wires that are sticking out here and use them to go around here and, and hold this 
uh, whole thing together. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, take a clamp or something, clamp that clamp it to the top so it connects with that wire. And what we'll use is probably uh, what you call a, a worm clamp or a hose clamp or uh, something like that to hold it, but we're just going to uh, make a mess here. We're, we're going to strip this off. Now be careful, you know, for those of you that don't think that this is a tool, that you think it's a weapon, because you think that maybe you're supposed to stab somebody with it or something. This is actually a tool. It used to be in my time, we carried them all the time. In fact, we had them on our belts when we uh, went to school because when you was in school in ag or something like that, you might need it. And and now uh, things have changed to, to where they want to relabel everything. But anyway, I'm just taking off this outside. And what I'm going to do, I'll probably grab these with the the pliers and straighten this in a little bit where it's a little bit it's not gonna make a big difference and then i'm going to untwist this top and now these are small wires but they're going to be short and they're not going to hold a lot of weight the idea is that uh multi strand wire actually carries more juice and if you understood electricity, which I have a background in uh, automotive, and I used to work as an uh, engineer uh, for a while, so I'm really knowledgeable when it comes to uh, metallurgy and uh, wire and stuff like that, electronics. But when you're dealing with th this, the more surface area, because... Uh, Whenever electricity, as we know it, standard electricity, travels, it travels down the outside of a wire. So if you got a single uh, strand of wire instead of a multi-strand, then you've only got this outside surface that it can uh, travel down. Now, when you have multi-strand, it travels down the outside of each one of these wires. Even though they're wrapped together, it travels down the outside of each one. So it carries more current. So when you build an end like this and you understand how current flows, then you understand uh, why this works better for picking up current. And, and uh, in no way am I trying to say that static electricity is like uh, your standard AC that comes in, in your electric plug because they are definitely not... Uh, if it was stable because the voltage that's available, if they and not say it ain't a way to keep get it stable. It's just that if it is, it's it's been hidden from us because uh, there there is free energy out there. Uh, hopefully soon we'll all find out that. But it's just like this method of uh, farming or gardening is it's out there if you start using it you start trying to understand it. Now, if you're one of these and you're listening to these uh, channels that knows everything and they tell you that, uh, oh, no, there's no way that can work. There's no way. You know, you have to have a basis for your knowledge in order to understand something, and you're not going to understand something when you, uh, let's say, how do they say, uh, God give you, uh, one mouth and two ears, and that's because it's important to listen. And, and a lot of people, they automatically want to open that mouth, and and they got something ready to say because they don't understand something. Well, you know, all of us didn't understand something at one point, and uh, after a period of time, we learned uh, more about it, and then we understood it better. You know, it's like two plus two is four. You know, you have to have uh, a basis to start with uh, and, and until you learn that you're not going to completely understand it and if you don't understand it that's fine if you just understand how to use it uh, because uh, 
everyone that I've watched that talks about uh, this electroculture, they're they're flawed in their explanation in a lot of ways because uh, and it's because they they don't completely understand it and they try to fill in the gaps or or they or they got their information from somebody that's trying to fill in the gaps. Okay, now what this is, this forms the antenna. Now there's probably an ideal form for this antenna to, to draw or collect more energy. It's just like your TV antenna. Let me get a drink here. It's been so hot today. And uh, I know I said 99 a while ago, but it's supposed to have been up to like 100. Okay. We built the top to it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, take this out. I'm going to actually get my saw and saw this off a little bit shorter because I, it's split real bad here. And I want to be able to clamp it and put some pressure on it. And if I put pressure on it there, it's going to end up with a problem. So uh, let me pause for just a second. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get back to where we was. I got this in cut off. I've got my clamp here and uh, just your regular worm clamp or um, stainless uh, hose clamp. I always seem to want to hang on to all these older ones. They they uh, always seem to have some kind of use come back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this in behind here. Work this in behind this hose clamp. I want to make sure I get all the wires in there. So what I'll do is once I clamp this down, I'll be able to uh, put a little tension to hold them tight. Now, when I do this too, I want to uh, make sure that I wrap this wire here around this because I really want it to make good contact. We'll see if we can run this out just a little more without creating a situation. Now we're just going to uh, tighten this down. And make sure you get it good and tight, you know. But uh, you can use a copper rod. You can use uh, uh, copper tubing like you would use for water water line. Or for short antennas, you could use regular old copper tubing. Now what I'm going to do, I got that in there. I'm just going to finish. And I'm just going to run this around here. And I'll twist it around up here on the top too. Just so I use up this extra that I had on here. There's no reason to cut it off and it's not going to hurt uh, to have that extra. In fact, it might even help. Who knows? And as you've seen so far in the garden, and I say I'm not going to uh, overblow this. I'll let you make up your own decision. But what I've got right here now uh, is a atmospheric antenna. This is definitely high enough that it would do uh, a good job of, of collecting uh, some energy uh, in the atmosphere and uh, whatever frequency that is. And off the magnetic field and, and static electricity and such as that, but bring this down. There's a lot of uses. The further you get into this, and 
Yeah. That's that's it. This it's nothing uh, fancy. Now a lot of them use uh, spirals at the top. That's good. Anything that's got a lot of extra area to for this energy to collect. And like say they say the direction makes a difference. Uh, I know that whenever you look at the drain and the way the water turns clockwise in the northern hemisphere, uh, but uh, and I see a lot of antennas that are spiral antennas, and they say that if you're in the southern hemisphere, install them a certain way, turn them over so it's the opposite way. Well, if it's twisted clockwise, you turn it over. It's twisted clockwise the other way. So <clears throat> as far as a a, like I say, a lot of the information that's out there just does not hold water. I mean, come on, use your use your brain. But understand that plants respond to uh, energy frequency. Uh, they know that there's a a human frequency that's a really low uh, frequency. Of course, you're not going to hear it because. Uh, it's so low and it's there all the time and it closely matches the earth's frequency but do know that you affect your plants when you're out there your mood affects your plants other people's mood affects your plants uh, just as other people's moods would affect your mood uh, the, the more that you're in tune and awake with it it's not some silly uh, religious type deal this is a scientific uh, bunch of information and like I say it actually works because what it's doing is in somehow this is reacting with the the earth's magnetic field and if it's increasing it or what we don't we don't feel it and and as far as the studies there's not a lot of studies into it that that are beyond just uh studies to see how it affects but the reason for it affecting them they don't the information is not out there. Uh, and so that makes it easy for someone to come along and say, oh, this is mumbo jumbo. Well, you know, it works. So if if you uh, want to continue to learn more about uh, electroculture, and I'll try to stay up on it regular, but this, like I say, it's a simple atmospheric antenna uh this is this will be ideal if you if you have a, a situation where you're growing in pots now they do have the a little spiral spring type looking uh antenna a lot of people say oh this works so good another thing about this is when you install it install it on the south side of your plants don't don't install it to the north because it affects it with the uh, atmosphere and the magnetic field of the earth. And the way that it flows is the magnetic field flows from towards the north, magnetic north. So uh, if you put it on the south side, the energy from this is going to go towards the north. So if your crops are on the, the south side of this antenna, they're they're going to get very little effect. It might affect them some. Now, there is a way to increase the effect of it, is you can take and connect a wire to this wire, and you can run a grid in your garden, and, and supposedly you could run it in your uh, uh, containers. And this antenna would affect a bigger area. It would affect the whole area that that wire grid is running. Uh, another thing I say is don't mix your, your metals. Now, uh, you can, and, and I hear people say, oh, well, these don't use copper because copper is going to corrode and then it's not going to work as well. They don't understand what it's doing. When your TV antenna is setting up there and it's aluminum and aluminum oxidizes, but you still get your TV shows just as good. Now, why is that? The corrosion does not affect, because we're not talking about a corroded wire like we're turning over an electricity down. We're picking up a frequency. Now, the frequency is energy, 
but it they everyone tries to relate it to something that they know and static electricity is not like dc current or ac current so let's just get away from that let's say that what we're dealing with is something totally different it's going to act different uh it it doesn't matter you put a you put this wire if it elect if if uh lightning is going to strike it's not going to necessarily pick an iron pipe that's right there close it might pick some other uh area a tree or something it could be because of high but it might miss an antenna pole that's metal because static electricity doesn't follow the same and plus this does affect uh the whole area there and it and i'm sure somebody knows but they've been keeping that information quiet because for sure we want to keep everybody selling uh, chemical fertilizer, you know, uh, and they just say fertilizer, but it's chemical fertilizer. Whenever you take natural gas and you take uh, nitrates out of the air and you put it under extreme pressure and you make a ammonia nitrate or something, you make nitrogen fertilizer with using uh, petroleum products. So, uh, and, and if that's what you want to be feeding your, your plants, <laughs> go for it. But if that's what you want, don't bother growing plants. You can get that those in the store. I kind of devote to uh, organic. I understand organic better. And if you want to understand how, how electrocultural affect your plants, bigger plants, bigger harvest, faster growth, stuff like that, we'll stay tuned. And of course, all you got to do is hit that subscribe, hit that bell, select all so you'll be notified. And of course, share this uh, video. Once you start seeing how this happens and, and how this works, uh, let other people know. You know, let's let's get people to growing and growing good food, a lot of food and uh, more natural understanding uh, the process of it. Anyway. All I can say, give it a big thumbs up. And, uh, of course, enjoy that gardening experience. And if you hang in there a little bit longer, uh, make sure that your copper wire is in under the soil. Now, it's good if it's moist around here. So if you can put this down about uh, 8 inches or a foot, that's great. And then uh, that way you'll give good contact uh, to your soul. Happy gardening.